Mark Rogers, TV talking to Michigan State football. In recent years, of course, Mark Antonio has overachieved against top 10 opponents. But uh, last Saturday in East Lansing, uh, as a favorite uh, by about five points over Wisconsin, they went down hard at 30 to 6. We bring in Austin Smith from uh, The Only Colors to help us break down uh, Sparty's effort against Wisconsin. But more than that, let's uh, spin it forward to Indiana this week. Austin, we appreciate the time, man. Oh, absolutely, Mark. Thanks for having me. So uh, I hate to bring it up, but it was a big one. It was the game that I really wanted to see last week, number eight in the country versus number 11. And uh, we always underestimate, I talked about Michigan State, but it seems like the national narrative also underestimates Wisconsin at times. And despite the win against LSU, uh, most of us thought Michigan State would take care of business at home, and it just didn't work out. And considering you were facing a first-time starting quarterback and Alex Hornibrook, it, it was surprising that Wisconsin didn't I, – I would say that they they played well up front, but it wasn't like they beat you with a running game. They they beat you with precision passing, and obviously they, they got the big turnovers in key spots. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think it's it's almost weird. I don't want I don't mean to cop out and start with silver linings, but you, you alluded to the fact that uh, Wisconsin didn't win the game in typical Wisconsin fashion, at least offensively. Uh, Corey Clement – Really, Michigan State did a good job on the first couple downs. Um, almost every drive, you really didn't pop any big ones. Uh, Ogunba Wale, they're one of their backups, one of their only healthy backups, actually had a couple decent runs, but they, they didn't do a whole lot on the ground. And, you know, if, if you've watched Wisconsin seemingly any time since Barry Alvarez took over, who knows how many years ago, that's, that's what they've always done. But uh, Michigan State did do a good job containing them. The front seven played well. There's been, you know, concerns about the defensive line, but I thought they actually played – respectively, uh, respectively, excuse me. Um, but Hornerbrook on third down just made big plays. You know, he, he, his receivers were running wide open sometimes, but also he, uh, he did not look like a redshirt freshman. That is, that is absolutely true. And you know, he's got another big, big test this week against Michigan. So, uh, hopefully for the, for Badger faithful, he can go out and, uh, sweep the state. I know I'll be rooting for him to do it. That's for sure. You know, our perception of what happens in college football changes from week to week because, of course, we had high expectations for Notre Dame. Uh, sure. They lose to Texas. Okay, it doesn't take too much of the shine off. And then you guys go to South Bend and take care of business and really dominate the game in the second and third quarters. Uh, who knows what that win means now. Uh, I still think Notre Dame's a very talented football team. Uh, they have their issues as well. Tyler O'Connor, okay, three interceptions, 18 of 38. Can you evaluate his play? Because I know once you got down, obviously, the quarterback starts to press, needs to make plays, and the stats may not look quite as respectable. I think he didn't have much of a running game to go on either. And he's he's not – I think Michigan State fans have picked up, up on pretty quickly. He's not he's not Connor Cook. I think he's – I think those who are – and there have been some people out there that are calling for him to be benched already. Uh, I think that is a little bit ahead of – where we really are I don't I, you know one bad game as bad as it was is is not worth him benching that Wisconsin defense is very good that's another thing you, you say you're evaluating the opponents North, Notre Dame's defense might not be very good it seems that way after they got 38 points scored on them by Duke but Wisconsin's defense is very good both in the back and up in the front certainly that 3-4 gave him problems he had trouble identifying the edge rush uh, his tackle struggled a bit in blocking. He didn't have much of a run game. And when this year's Michigan State team is not able to run the ball, he's not Connor Cook. He's not going to go out there and, and win you shootouts, uh, which is what he kind of had to do, unfortunately, this week. But he, you know, some of his picks, the three picks, none of them were, well, I can't say that because I don't remember exactly, but I don't believe any of them were tipped. I know a couple of them, at least two of them were just really ugly. The last one was sort of a levels play rolling out to the right. He had a tight end on a check down and then Donnie Corley, the freshman wide receiver was running wide open in the back of the end zone and he checked it down. Linebacker jumped the route and that was, you know, the game was pretty in hand at that point, but that uh, pretty much sealed the deal. I, I want to give him, more of a chance. I mean, people do have to remember, yes, he has wins at Ohio State. Yes, he has a win um, at Notre Dame, but this is still his fourth well, last week. This will be his, what, fourth or fifth start coming up this week? It's not, you know, he is a fifth-year senior, but this is still, he's he's pretty inexperienced. So, what you know, Wisconsin's defense, I think people will see is the real deal, and maybe that certainly a zero touchdown, three interception performance is never really something you can write off, but um, 
he was going against a good opponent, and you like to think he could bounce back against someone like Indiana this week. Hey, Austin, when you look at this program, it's been established now by Mark Antonio as a Big Ten power and a national power. It's not one where you expect, okay, we just went 11-1 and one last year, but hey, we may only win six or seven games this sure. year. He's pretty much established. He's brought up the recruiting. It's not top five in the country, but it's very solid 15 to 25 in the country. And as, as you well know better than I do, uh, you develop them much better than, than most. So you're getting the most out of those recruiting classes. So we, we expect most of us in the national media to um, see a drop back from Michigan State, still maybe a nine-win team this year. Then they jump out against Notre Dame, and uh, maybe we, we jump on that a little bit too hard. But uh, now the loss against Wisconsin by 24 points. Uh, how good is this team through three games and two good oppo opponents versus what you expected them to be? And, and where are the concerns? It's actually funny. I know that I going into the season was hoping to come out of this first stretch two and one, but I was thinking that that loss was going to come to Notre Dame. Uh, I didn't. I severely underestimated this Wisconsin team, and I think maybe where you thought Notre Dame was going to be and where you thought Wisconsin were going to be might just be flipped. So you know, if you take that's certainly painting a prettier picture than uh, what last week looked like. But I still do think this is a nine win team. There's some very winnable teams. Or, excuse me, games on this schedule. Uh, Michigan and Ohio State, the obvious challenges. Those are two very good teams. Um, I think Michigan still has some questions to answer, but that's obviously a, a legitimate top five to ten program. That's never in a, in a rivalry game. But, you know, there are improvements that have to be made. The defensive, you know, Michigan State has is, is always been known as, you know, for the no-fly zone, uh, that, that tough secondary, which definitely took a step back a year ago and seems to still not be back up to Michigan State standards. That's definitely a concern moving forward, especially this week against Indiana, a team that likes to throw the ball through for almost 500 yards last week alone. Um, that's absolutely a concern, as you know, as is the, the quarterback play. I mean, I, I do think O'Connor deserves – you certainly can't give him a pass because they're at the point as a program where you don't just hand out free passes to quarterbacks anymore. You're expected to play to a certain standard, and he did not do that last week. Um, but can he push the ball down the field? And as, as of now, we haven't seen a whole lot of evidence of that. You know, he's thrown some long touchdown passes, but the one against Notre Dame – you know, Donnie Corley made that play in the end zone. That was a 40-something yarder. Um, but Donnie Corley stole that away from the defensive back. Uh, Tyler O'Connor has plenty of weapons. Uh, I think Dave Warner will, will find a better rhythm against, you know, maybe some some worker defenses. But, um, you know, th there are definitely concerns. I think that secondary is a concern. The pass rush is absolutely a concern. Outside of Malik McDowell, you haven't had a ton of – Pass rush. You haven't gotten a ton of pass rush out of your four-man front, and that's what Michigan State's done for so long. And to combat that this year, they're going to blitz a lot more out of their linebackers. But they've lost John Reschke and they've lost Riley Bulla already for what looks to be extended periods of time. So it's there are definitely some questions, more questions than you're used to having with this Michigan State team. But like you said, they've recruited a lot better. There's plenty of talent, plenty of depth. So I still think this is a nine maybe even a 10-win team, depending how things break for them. Yeah, Austin, when your program has an identity, that's a good thing because good programs have an identity for something that they're known for. And for Michigan State, it's been some of the things you just locked in on, uh, power running game, be able to stop the run, lock down uh, corners, very tough, well-schooled uh, well team, well-coached, and so forth. But um, yeah. th that's not necessarily the team year to year. That's the reputation they've built over five years, but that's not necessarily this team. Now they face an Indiana team that can really throw the football around with uh, Richard Legault. Uh, Legault that you mentioned uh, threw for about 500 yards against Wake Forest. He did throw five interceptions, and that was the undoing wow. of the Hoosiers last week. But this is an Indiana team. They're, they're kind of interesting uh, in the mix in the Big Ten East because they're not going to win any division championships. But last year, they had the ball at the four-yard line to beat Ohio State. Uh, yeah. They they took you guys to about the 10-minute mark of the fourth quarter right there in the game. They took Michigan to overtime, so certainly not a team you can look past this this week. Uh, what have you seen thus far from Indiana? You know, it, it's it's similar to teams of the past. Like, you pretty much just nailed it. They like to throw the ball, and if they can limit turnovers, which they were able to do pretty well with Nate Sudfeld a year ago. Uh, he's in the NFL, I believe, uh, somewhere, um, and he was really good for them last year. I was on hand for that. I uh, 
excuse me, Indiana, Michigan State game a year ago, and they had Michigan State on the ropes. And then kind of towards the end, MSU did what they've done, kind of did to Notre Dame too, and just wore them down. That big front seven, um, for Michigan, excuse me, the big front offensive line was just a little too much for for Indiana to handle. And that's sort of where they are as a program. Once they get beat up, the reserves aren't necessarily up to the standard of a you know Michigan State, a Michigan, Ohio State, even in, you know the Iowas of the world. Um, but you know, they put they pose a very interesting challenge for Michigan State. They throw the ball a lot. Michigan State's been exposed through the air. You saw what Deshaun Kaiser was able to do to them once they kind of stopped bringing pressure and uh, Notre Dame had the ball a little more consistently down the stretch. Deshaun Kaiser, who's a very good, very good quarterback, but was was kind of picking Michigan State apart when they started to drop back. Um, you saw with Alex Hornerbrook last week on those long third downs, even some fourth downs, was really able to make a lot of throws. So um, if Michigan State cannot get a pass rush against this Indiana team with four guys, it, it, they're, they're going to get scored on. Indiana has always been able to put up points. They got two really good receivers. I know Westbrook um, is probably their leading receiver. Uh, Divine Redding's a solid running back. He did. I think he had a couple decent carries against Michigan state last year. So um, it, it's a, it's a good offensive team. The, the trouble is, like you said, if Legault's going to turn the ball over five times, they're just not going to beat a lot of teams, a home loss. I and mean, this is still in a game Michigan state should win. Frankly, I mean, even if it's not, even though it's on the road, it's under the lights, they're going to be fired up. It's still a big, it's a huge game for them. Um, it, they just lost at home to Wake Forest. This is just, this is a team Michigan State should beat, but that does not mean they're going to run away with it because Indiana possesses a really, it could, uh, could definitely give them some trouble if they don't turn the ball over. Hey, Austin, before I let you go, I'm interested about the fan base. Uh, we, we saw it this week at LSU. Uh, a top five to 10 program that expects to win uh, and a couple losses is going to send everybody in panic mode. Uh, that would be the case at Florida State, Ohio State, Alabama, a few places like that. Michigan State, a long story tradition, but really not much over 500 since I've been watching Michigan State football. And that's that's been quite a long time for several decades. But in the last five years, completely different expectations standards have been set by mark d'antonio so does this fan base go crazy over a loss i would say no they haven't frankly, there have been a whole lot of them in the last like you said five six years they're, they're having about um and really west they've been getting just trounced i mean alabama absolutely ran them out of the gym last year you know uh but outside of that the losses this was a different type of loss this was a game they were expected to win at home uh, as, as a top 10 team. And they not only lost, but they got, they got smoked. It wasn't a fluke play like Nebraska last year where you expected a penalty and it wasn't called. Um, it wasn't losing to what everybody universally thought was a better team like Ohio State the last couple of times they lost to Ohio State. So th this was – I, I don't want to say that Michigan State fans are in panic mode per se. Um, I do think that this brought – the fact that it came on the back of what we thought was a really impressive win against Notre Dame brought the fan base back down to earth a little bit. Um, I still think the standard is very high. I don't think it's – no one's calling for Mark D'Antonio's head after this game. No one's – you know, the furthest I've seen is one or two people on a message board calling for Tyler O'Connor to – to take a seat, but um, I wouldn't say the fan base is overreacting. Uh, expectations are still high. I think everybody realizes that this wasn't a division loss. This was a loss to what looks to be a pretty legitimate team, a team that if they go in and beat Michigan will be a top five team with three really good wins on its resume. Um, and, and, you know, they can still – all their goals are still in front of them. If they, you know, you know, Mark D'Antonio will always say that he said it time and time again. Our goals are always in front of us, and they can still beat Michigan. They can still beat Ohio State. They can still win the division, go to the Big Ten championship game, and end the year with uh, a championship ring. And I, I think because it came this early, that should be where Michigan State fans' heads are at at this point. All right, Austin Smith from the Only Colors SB Nation's uh, platform for Michigan State athletics. Getting us uh, straight on Michigan State football as the Sparty uh, gets set for a trip to Bloomington, Indiana. Austin, we appreciate the time. Well, thanks for having me, Mark. Appreciate it.